Hey everyone, welcome to a new video. Today I'm gonna be showing you guys how to build in The Sims 4. This is for beginners or anyone who just doesn't have a lot of confidence with building. So hopefully this helps you. Subscribe because I'm gonna turn this into a mini series and put it nicely in a simple playlist. You can watch how to build each step of the way uh, without feeling too overwhelmed with one big video. Um, so yeah, subscribe if you haven't already and let's get into learning how to build. Okay, so first up, I recommend when playing Sims to get a mouse with a mouse wheel because this wheel is going to make it a lot easier for you. Um, even if you have a laptop, good to get just like a little plug-in mouse with a wheel. Jumping into The Sims 4, you use the WASD keys to move around. You can hold down your right mouse click to rotate from left to right, left button to click and move around the world, and your full stop and comma keys to spin around. Now, one thing I think is really helpful that a lot of players do is they go to their settings by clicking the three dots in the top right hand corner, going to game options, game camera, and selecting this option, which is The Sims 3 camera. Now, the reason why is mostly because uh, it allows you to use your middle mouse button to control your camera pitch. So if I apply those settings and come back to the game, when I press my mouse wheel, I can actually move the camera around entirely, which is really, really helpful. Definitely recommend that. The middle toolbar up here at the top has undo and redo arrows, or you can use control Z and control Y. We also have an option to bulldoze. Be careful using this because it will bulldoze your whole lot. Um, you can actually move an entire house around the lot here. You can save your lot. The sledgehammer will allow you to delete singular items instead of bulldozing everything. Or click and drag to delete as well. Uh, these two we'll get into in another video. I don't want to confuse you guys. And then this arrow is to select. Just above me, you can name your lot and to the left, you can choose what kind of lot you want to build. Today we're gonna to do residential because we wanna build a house for our Sims to live in. There's also the value of the lot. As you add more, this value will increase and the lot dimensions. One thing to mention is you cannot change the size of your lot as you're building. So you pick a lot to build on and that's the size of lot that will remain. So pick wisely. Don't pick a little lot to build a mansion on. The three dots over here, like we just saw before, will go to your game options. You can also save here, so that's good to know, and also exit the game. And then we'll go through these other things a little bit later. So let's start off by going through our build tools. In the bottom left-hand corner, you can see this image of a house. And basically, whatever part of the house you click on will correspond to the tool you want to use. For example, if you'd like to use a door, click on the door, and that'll show all the doors. Similarly, if you would like to have a fence, you click on the fence and here's all the fences. If you go down to the next icon on the left here, which is objects by room, uh, this we'll use when we start to furnish the house in the next video. We're just gonna focus on building the house for now and that's the same with objects by function. And at the bottom, this we definitely won't be using, but this is actually a household inventory. So if you were playing the game, you might find things like career rewards are placed here, or if you move house and you don't sell your belongings, they will automatically go into this household inventory. Going back to build mode, the first thing you probably would like to do is build some walls. So most people would probably click on the wallpaper here, which is actually just for wallpaper. If you want to build a wall, you need to click on the wall next to the door down here or this uh, this floor, actually. That's actually not really very intuitive at all, but that's where you click to get walls. You can pick this first wall tool, which allows you to click and drag out your wall so you can create any shape you want. But of course, if you'd like to create a room, you will need to join all the walls to close it off. Um, and then you know that it's fully sealed because it's dark inside because no sunlight is getting in. This is probably a good time to let you know that there's different ways to look at the walls. If you go to your top right hand corner, there's this tool here, which is your walls up view. If you click on this, it may change to walls down view, uh, which is quite good when you're doing something like a floor plan. And then if you click it again, you have the wall cutaway view, which is very helpful if you're furnishing because it'll just let you see all the way through. Um, but I suggest we start with walls up. 
And if you cannot see a grid, all you have to do is press G on your keyboard and that'll show your grid or make it disappear. Now I can use the bulldoze tool right here, bulldoze lot, tick that, and it'll completely clear it. So next to the wall tool, which we just said was to click and drag, uh, the next option is the room tool. The room tool is really good for beginners um, because it's just easy to draw out a full room. And the nice thing about having a room is that you can go to your select tool or press H on your keyboard. And this opens up some options to kind of change the shape of the room a little bit. So you can actually click and drag these arrows to make the room any shape that you want. You can also click the move icon and this will move your room around the lot just like that. You can rotate it as well and you can even copy the room using the copy tool. We also have some wall heights here. We're just going to focus on short wall. I don't want to overcomplicate it. And also there's platform raising. Again, we don't need to go into that. That's a little bit more advanced. Um, so let's bulldoze that. Uh, the other bulldoze option is to bulldoze the terrain and that is useful when you're landscaping. So let's start off by building a little house. I'm thinking we make a nice T shape. So let's click and drag the room tool out to create a nice sizable room here. I'd say try and make it six by 10. And uh, then I'm gonna click on my room tool again and we'll do maybe a six by five room here. So basically this is going to be like our living, dining, kitchen area. And then just to here, we're going to put in a bathroom and a bedroom. We'll just do a one bedroom house. So to make the bathroom, we want to kind of cut into this existing room. There's two ways we could do that. We could use the wall tool and draw in our bathroom, just like that. I'm gonna press Control Z twice to delete those walls. Or we can use the room tool and you can just click and drag it into the room. You can see how it lines up nicely with my existing walls. Um, so I'm gonna do a two by three room here as a little bathroom and ensuite. And you know, this is a pretty good shape to start with. Now, once you've got your boxes like this, um, you probably wanna see what's on top of them. Like, do we have a roof yet is the question. So over here on the top right hand corner, you can use these arrows to go up and down floors. If you start building multi-story buildings or basements, this is how you go up or down. Uh, but whilst we just have a single story house, if we go up, we can just see that there's some default flooring on top of it. This is not our roof. If we wanted to, we could continue using our room tool and create a second story up here. Let's just keep it single story. <laughs> um, but you could do that if you wanted to. The only thing that's more difficult about that is you do need to put in either a staircase or a ladder. So you can do that from the downstairs floor and place it. And then that'll give you a staircase going upwards. So if we go down a level, you can also use your page down and page up keys. Although am I not working for some reason? It's pretty dark inside. So I suggest we put some lighting in to start. If you go here to your objects by function, um, this will show all the objects in the catalog. Keep in mind, I do have a little bit of custom content in here. So if anything looks a little funny, that's what it'll be. But we can actually click here to get a list of furnishing genres. And there's an option for lighting. If we select that to the left, you can have table lamps, floor lamps, outdoor, wall lights, ceiling lights, and miscellaneous, as well as a show or category. Let's go to our ceiling lamps and select the second or third one along, which is the super subtle saucer light. And this is a great item. It's in base game uh, for just getting like quick lighting source. And we can delete it later, but I like to personally use this just so I can see what I'm doing inside the house. So if we select that, you can also see some colors on the left. Um, you can change the color of it if you'd like to. I might go with black. And then we can hover our mouse over our room and where there's a green square, that's actually where the light will place in relation to the flooring. So let's try and place these in the middle. Put a couple in there and it's all nice and bright. I'll put one in the bathroom and one in the bedroom. So we can just see a little bit more easily now. Um, to get rid of this, just press delete. Okay, so we've got a general shape of house here. It's very simple, but simple is good. And the next thing we'd probably like to do is put a roof on. 
So we can go over here to build and then just click on the roof of the house and we have a series of different roofing options. For a more traditional house, um, you probably would like to use a gabled roof. So just a simple pitch roof or a hipped roof. A half gabled roof would usually be for a more modern contemporary look, usually. And then obviously it's going to get a little bit more difficult as soon as you start experimenting with hexagonal, octagonal, pentagonal, and also diagonal and rounded roofs. Um, so let's just go with a simple gabled roof. Um, so if you select that, you get a nice little size right here, which we will place and drag out. Uh, so it's best to place it in the corner of your building. And as per usual, you should follow the green square to know where it's going to be placed down. So if you place it in the corner, we can then drag it using these four arrows left or right and from back to front. So let's just pull that all the way back so it covers our house. And look at that, isn't that nice? Um, this is actually a good time to change the lighting because it's a little shady right now. So let's also click on this lighting icon over here because we can change the lighting to different times of the day. And just know this won't change the time of day in your gameplay. It's just the appearance in build mode so you can see more easily. And also you might wanna see what your house looks like at nighttime. All right, so this is looking really good. Now let's go to this L-shaped portion of the house or T-shaped, I should say. Uh, let's do the same. We can get a gabled roof. And as you can see here, it would automatically face the front of the lot, which I'd like it to go the other way. So I could either put it down and use these rotation arrows to change the direction. Or if I press Control Z a couple of times, before I place it down, I can use my full stop and comma key to rotate it. So it's really up to you which way you prefer. I like to rotate it before I place it. Again, place it in the corner so the green square is on top of your existing room. And then just use these bigger arrows to drag back. If you drag it just to here, there's going to be a gap. So I suggest you bring it all the way in to about halfway into this one. So it meets nicely in the middle. And there you go, there's your roof. Yeah, the other arrows that you can see here, these little ones, they will actually bring in the sides of the roof. So this would be more useful if you wanted a modern pitched roof look or kind of a Scandinavian look, um, farmhouse look, or alternatively, you could bring it all the way out and kind of create this A-frame look um, so you can get really creative with roofing. If I wanted to complicate things more, I would tell you that these round the roof and yeah, all of that, but let's just keep it simple for now. So this is very exciting. There's also different roof patterns. If you select this little roof option over here, uh, you can even select glass roofs if you like. Obviously that poses a few issues inside. Um, so you might want to wait till you're a little more confident with building, um, but you can do like a metal roof, gravel roof, some packs such as Eco Lifestyle will give you pretty fun options like a grass roof. Uh, I might just do like a corrugated roof. And then because the trim looks a little rough around the edges here, you can even select the trim part of the roof in the bottom left. And uh, we can select one of these. I'm going to choose black to match the color of my roof. And if I just hover over, you can see that it's going to trim the roof really nicely. So I'll just click on there, click on the other one, and that looks really good. All right, so now we have our roof done. Uh, we can maybe put some wallpaper on the house. So if you hover down to here to wall patterns, this is where our wallpapers are. And just to the left here, you get different categories, tiles, rock and stone, masonry, paneling, etc. Uh, let's go for a bit of a mix. I'm going to do some brick. Obviously, I have DLCs installed, so or extra packs and some CC. I might have more options than you. Uh, but just select a brick or a wallpaper you like. Some of them might have some little swatches you can pick in the corner, um, which will show up like a line of swatches like this. You can click on those to change the color. Um, I'm just going to select this one. And you can click and drag it to paint your walls. Or if you want to be quicker, you can hold shift and it'll cover the entire portion of the house or room area. So you can hold shift to speed that up a little bit. And don't forget to also paint the top bit of your roof too. 
And just for a bit of fun, I'm also going to pick some paneling. Let's go for a nice charcoal here. Uh, again, I can press shift to speed it up a little bit. And there you go, we have two different styles. I think it would also be nice to have a little pathway so we can go down here to our floor patterns, go to a category that suits, so perhaps stone would be nice. And I can click some pavers here and create a nice pathway by clicking and dragging. Remember, if you want to see the grid on the ground, you just need to go down a floor and press your G key. There we go, very nice. So I think the next step would be to get some windows and doors. So we do the same thing. We go to doors um, and we can pick whichever ones we like. There are different heights of doors, but because we're just doing a short wall, we just need the short door options. If we had taller walls, we would go for taller doors. So pick any door that you like. I'll use the base game one again. If you hover over the thumbnail, uh, you can also see swatches here. You can click on those to get your extra color options and see a little preview of them. So I might click on this one and we have a nice door there. If you place it and decide, you know, it's not right for me, there is an easier way to change the color swatches than deleting the door. Um, so you can press delete to get back your select mouse. And there's this icon here, design tool. And if you click on this and hover over an item, like our door, it'll highlight. You can click on it. And this is just a shortcut to easily change the colors and pick whichever one you want. Hopefully that's not too difficult. Let's try and put in some interior doors as well. Um, also keep in mind if you scroll down, there's also archways you can place if you prefer that. Let's get a nice simple door for our interior. I'll put one here into our bedroom one here into the bathroom. And let's make this a double doored bathroom so you can access it from the main bedroom as well, or the only bedroom. And then you know what I'm thinking? Maybe I wanna change the color of those doors just to go over it again. We go to our design tool, we hover over the color we want to change, and then we can just click and select black doors or white doors or whatever you feel like. Um, so maybe I'll change them to all being timber doors. Okay. Next up would be windows. So we can select our windows over here and do the same thing. Select whichever windows you want. You might want a more traditional look or you might want a modern look. I'm gonna select the let there be light window. I know that I will do black windows and then we can just hover over the walls and place them directly in like this. And yeah, I might put a couple here. If you realize you've put it in the wrong space, you can click and move them around. It's no big deal. Um, if you want to do the same window or door again, uh, you can use the eyedropper tool over here. So you can click on that, click on the item you wish to copy and continue placing it. So I might just move these around a little bit. I might also put in a back door. So let's go to our category again. I'm gonna place this one select the design tool, or I've just used R key as a shortcut. Let's place that there. And I'm gonna use the eyedropper tool to copy the same flooring to use at the back of the house. So we'll go like this and create a nice little outdoor area. Do whatever you like there. Um, I might also eyedrop this light here because I think it's looking a little dark in this corridor. And there you go, there is the beginning of your house. Let me know how you went with that in the comments down below. Very exciting. Well, actually, I just realized we probably need a uh, bathroom window because it might get a little stinky in there. Um, so I'm going to get a smaller one. We'll just pop this one up higher. You can put it at different heights on the wall. There we go. Let's get a tree over here. I'll show you guys how to do some nicer landscaping in a later video, but you can pop a tree in. I'll put one at the back. Now you can even put some flowers in if you want like that. You might like to experiment with some fences as well. You can click on the fence tool. I'm gonna use a nice uh, matching charcoal fence. Um, automatically, it might default to replace fences. I suggest you place fences by drawing, which is this top option. And it's just like the walls. You can just click and drag around like this, draw it in. Um, if you were to use the replace fence, it would be more useful if you decide to change your fence design. And it just means you can hover over it 
and replace it. You can even replace walls as well. I'm gonna use my eyedropper. Again, place fences by drawing. Take this to the back of the house and create a nice fenced backyard like this. Oop, just missed a bit there. Last of all, let's change the lighting to nighttime. Just click that a couple of times. And we're gonna put in some outdoor lights. So go to objects by function over here. We could do wall lights or outdoor lights. It's up to you. The thing is outdoor lights, I think has one. I would like a wall light out here. I might go this one in a black color, the outdoor wall sconce. And I'm gonna place a couple of these out here. So, you know, you can see when it's nighttime. Might also put a couple at the back too. And go to outdoor lights over here and get a couple of these to put at the front of the house, just like that. Uh, maybe a couple here too. Actually, no, I'll move those there. And then you can press your lighting options up here again to see it in the daylight. Turn the grid off so you can see it clearly. And voila, you have a house, you guys. Well done. Uh, I also recommend you press the option menu and save in the top right hand corner so you don't lose any of your work. So in the next part, I'll teach you how to do a floor plan and start furnishing. It's important that your house not only looks nice or suits the style you want to achieve, but also that your Sims can live there and access whatever they need to survive. Cause it's not as much fun if they just die. You know what I mean? <laughs> well, sometimes it is, let's be honest. <laughs> anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Subscribe if you haven't already. I hope you enjoy your simming and I hope you're having a lovely morning, afternoon, or evening, wherever you are in the world. I'll speak to you soon. Back, duck.